All right. I'm introducing. So, did Mr. Bishop do an incredible job with the business? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, great command of the information. But uh, what a lot of associates <laughs> love about Super Saturday is the fact that we get to learn exactly what uh, inspired him, what he learned, and the tools that he has uh, used to be able to get to the level of success that he has. So, he's already been an incredible leader in the company. When I got started 14 years ago, he's got well over 20 years with Legal Shield. Millionaire Clemmer, again, has personally written over 3,000 memberships. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather learn from than our good friend from the great state of Oregon, Mr. Mike Bishop. Thank you. Mr. Bishop. This night, we'll be starting a basketball team. That's right. That's right. <laughs> My playing days are over. Um, so, I was uh, sitting down with a president from a few years ago, some of you may remember Tony Patrell, and chatting with him over lunch, and it's like, how can we build our team bigger? How can we help more people help more people? And he's like, say less to more people. And, you know, and it's really about, and that's where it hit me, like, it's way more about exposing than closing. It's more, more important to share with more people, you know, so many times, especially when we're new, we get in this idea, like we got six people to talk to and all six of them need to sign up. And of course, we'd like for them to sign up and it's great if they'll sign up, but mm, how do you get six? Talk to 12, talk to 15, talk to 18, talk to 20, right? The ratio will appear. So let me ask you a question, right? And those of you that have been around a while will probably already kind of understand this concept, but let me ask you this question. What if 100% of the people you gave a full system exposure to enroll in the membership or as an associate? If 100% of the people that you shared the system with, 15, 20 minute video, you know, Zoom overview, you sitting down, kneecap to kneecap, absolutely would sign up. First off, would that be cool? Yeah. Second question, the real <laughs> question is, how many people would you talk to? Everybody. How many people would you share with them? Oh. Okay, give me a number. How many people do you think you could sit down with if everybody signed up in a day? Three a day. Ten. Three a day? Ten. Ten? I'm say ten. Ten? Ten, I'd say 15. Yeah, you guys, do I hear 12, 12, 13? Look at 15. Anybody 15? No, give me 15, 90, 15, 20. There's no option here, too, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, write that number down in your notes. That's the number you could do if 100 people, if 100% of the people said yes. You could fit that into your schedule. Family obligations, church obligations, school obligations, whatever obligations. You could, a hundred people said yes, right? You sit down with 10 people a day. So what if 50% said yes? Could you sit down with 10 people a day? What if 25 people said yes? Could you sit down with 10 people in a day for two and a half memberships a day? I used to say a membership a day would keep the bill collectors away. <laughs> you write a membership a day, your financial future will change. 100% oh, yeah. guarantee, right? So we talk about two a week or, or two a day, two exposures a day. We, we just agreed that if 100 people said, yeah, 100% of the people said, yes, we'd sit down with 10. What if it's not 100? What if it's 50? What if it's 25? What difference does it make on the numbers? Fill your pipeline. And when's the last time? Or can you, in one day, commit 10 people exposed? Right, and then if you can do that once, I think you can find the time and the effort and the inclination to do two a day, to be on a consistent two a day exposure cycle. So how do we start? Where do we find it? What do we do? First off, I love this video. And Dismissed from drama school with a note that read, wasting her time, she's too shy to put her best foot forward. Turned down by the Decca recording company who said, we don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. 
a failed soldier, farmer, and real estate agent. At 38 years old, he went to work for his father as a handyman. Cut from the high school basketball team, he went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. A teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything, and he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. His fiance died, he failed in business twice, he had a nervous breakdown, and he was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never lived. So, uh, you know, I think that just really goes to the point of it's okay they say no. You know, I really got comfortable with that. Like my first thing was just to take friends out to lunch. I had lunch during, I had time during the day. I made as many calls as it took to fill up a couple lunch appointments every single week because I did the math. Back then in the, you know, late 90s, you could sit down for lunch for 10 bucks each. Cost about 20 bucks for lunch, right? And you made about $100 when you marketed a membership. So I figured out I could take five people to lunch. Only one could say yes, four could say no. And the math said I get to eat free five times. <laughs> right, if it's free, it's for me. You know, and so we have to really think in that scope of, if when one says yes, for example, how do you make $100 when uh, you're only making, or how do you make $100 if five people tell you no? Four people tell you no and one tells you yes, right? You get $20 per no. No, 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 yes. I made $100, but I could say, thank you, I made $20. 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 Because you have to add those up. That's part of the equation. If people say no, people say yes. So we don't worry about the outcome as much as did they get a full exposure? I like the idea of we don't care um, how much, we care that they know, not about those that say no, right? So we build our list, we build our business, and there's four groups of people we're going to look for. Number one, the people we know. I had somebody yesterday, I don't wanna to talk to my friends and family. I'm like, I hear you, I understand basically what you said, Although I decided that I would feel terrible if friends and family didn't know the service existed because I was afraid to tell them. Period. I hate to I feel terrible. They needed it. Right? So I don't care whether they say no, I just care that they know. This person probably won't join the business. Right? I mean, if like if you own a hair salon, would you not want people to know you're cutting hair? You believe in the service, you want people to know about it and know that you cut hair. Now, they don't have to come to you for a haircut. I'd still be their friend. They don't have to get a legal shield for me. I've never lost a family member or friend because I shared legal shield with them. Period. So that's for other people to worry about. So there's the people we know. There's the people they know. How many people think that people you know know people? <laughs> right? If they don't know about legal shield, can they? Refer you. No, if they don't know about legal shield, they can't refer you to somebody that might need it. So, you know, I don't care if you say yes or no, I just care that, you know, because you may know some people that will really need this service. And unless I share it with you, I can't really do it. Well, let me, and then a lot of times I want to get just the 30 second version. And you can say things like, well, it's really like a puzzle. I can't just show you one piece, I have to show you the whole picture. Really like a puzzle, I can't just show you one piece. I need to show you the whole picture. It was one leverage to get to sit down or the full, full system overview. And so you can say, it may not be for you, maybe for somebody else. Number two, uh, number three, excuse me, there's the people we meet. How many people have ever met somebody before? <laughs> Great, congratulations, you can do this business, right? Uh, you know. So you walk into a mall somewhere, somebody says, I can help you. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for motivated people, right? Or, uh, you know, 
You've got a great smile. How long have you worked here? And I'll go through that. I'll go through that here in just a second. So meeting people, being a professional friend maker, and then there's the people they know. So the good news is we're never going to run out of people. How about that? Isn't that exciting? The people you know, the people they know, the people we can meet, the people they know. So that opens up the world to us. Right, Dave Crowley used to say, as long as people keep having sex, don't That's right. <laughs> I'll never forget don't, that. Don't encourage me to go into my day school. We're never run out of people. You know why? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Dave Zavola. No, that's a pretty good Dave Zavola. Dave Zavola told me I do a pretty good Dave Zavola. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta win, baby. Get out there and do it. I'm gonna tell you this right now. <laughs> God, I meant you walk backwards, you reverse your feet. Okay. <laughs> that's a pure love. You know that. All right. So when you're out and about, uh, pay a compliment to people. Ask them a question. You know, that's a great smile. But do you own the place? Is this yours? Right? At the coffee shop, something like that. No, I just work here nine times out of ten, right? Because usually the owner is a man in the front counter. How long have you worked here? Oh, five years, 15 years, five months, five days, whatever the number is. I like to say, oh, you must love it. <laughs> what do they say? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Now they're telling you, why? What do you got? In a way. So you must love it. Or I love this one because I, I, I made this one myself. Are you planning on retiring here? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm doing this on the side. I'm doing that. I'm doing whatever. Right? Maybe they say, yeah, yeah, it's a good gig, whatever. Maybe, you know, maybe they're not. Understand the more you prospect, the more you're going to get people that are like, mm -hmm. they're those people. There are a lot of them out there, more than the number in here or they'd be in here. Right? There's a lot of people that love. Don't believe that there's a larger potential for them than the one they've settled for. And that's okay. Those are not our prospects. But we have to go through enough people because we don't know. That's why some, some marking terms for you. They might be a suspect because they fog a mirror, because they have a job, because they, they, they suspect they might be open to business. But until you ask them if they're open or ask some of these kind of questions, you find out they're actually a prospect, right? That's the transition. So not everybody's a prospect, everybody's a suspect, okay? So if I'm retiring here, I'm expanding my business in this area, true or true? Yeah. 100%, always expanding your business in this area. Does that put you on a, is it a phrase that raises your sort of level of, respect from the client or you know, from the from the suspect from the prospect mm -hmm. right i'm expanding my business in the area you got a card uh well no i work at denny's but i have this handy pencil and paper right here that i hand carry around with me well jot down your name your phone number and your email and let me uh, send you some information or you know pull right up pull your phone right out hey can i shoot you an email it's usually where i start because most people are willing to get their email I'll put your phone number in there too can i shoot you a text is that okay yeah, I mean, once they give you your email, they're 10 times out of 10, we'll only give text. Because as soon as they say get their email, they think about the number of emails that are in their inbox, and they realize they probably won't get to it. So they're ready to give you the text. So um, if I texted you, would you watch it? If I texted you a video, would you check it out? I'm expanding my businesses in this area. I'm looking for a few key people. Another phrase I didn't put on here, but I use, I'm looking for a couple key people. I don't know if it'd be a fit for you. True or true. Best marketing, in my opinion, is when you can be authentic, be honest, and be basically direct. Right? Now, I'm not going to give them a full presentation over the counter, but I am going to be direct and say, I don't know if you qualify. True or true. Right? I'm looking for a couple of key people. I don't know if it'd be a fit or not. It also hopefully raises the curiosity and raises my, I me, mean, elevates you a little bit, and that they can look up to you and see if they would qualify to be a part of your business. Or if it would be a fit, because they're thinking, would they be a fit for us? But the reality is, they might be thinking, and it's true, would we be a fit for them? Because we're not a fit for everybody. So, if I sent you a video, would you watch it? Put them in a prospect. Can I, you know, will you watch it tonight? I, I always try to get like, will you watch it tonight or tomorrow? 
you know, oh, I, I get off at nine o'clock, I just go home, go to bed. Okay, so we'll check this tomorrow morning then. I assume, you, you know, probably go to work about noon. That type of thing. So I try to get them to commit to a particular time. Okay, you can put that in the note as well. What is it? What do you do? What would I be doing? Things like that. I work with one of the most exciting growth companies in North America. It's called Legal Shield. Have you heard of it? Or a lot of times I'll, I'll on the phone, I'll say, hey, I don't like to beat around the bush. I like to be right to the point. Because how many people are so tired of the, ne the network marketing and the marketing in general? It's like, I tell you what I do, but I have to kill you. <laughs> right? I mean, like, they try to eat, lengthen it out and give you this curiosity thing to where you're just like, you know what? I'm wasting my time here. Tell me what's up. So I like to beat around the bush or I work with one of the most exciting growth companies in North America. It's called Legal Shield, And I always, always finish Legal Shield with, have you heard of it? Because I want to know. Oh, my sister-in-law just talked to me about that last night at Thanksgiving dinner, right? Or, oh, I think a few years ago, I saw something like that. It looked really intriguing, but I just didn't follow up. For the first person follow up. And certainly I don't want to be in a position to where I'm uh, stepping on anybody's toes if somebody is in the middle of prospecting, right? Oh, I've had a membership for years. I love it. I refer people to who? Uh, generally, I just said you should get legal shield. We definitely need to talk. So you never know, but that's what I want to get to is find out what they know about legal shield, what their experience is in general. Is there any questions over any of that? That makes sense. Yeah. Hopefully, that's some phraseology that people can use if you're not using it or create your own. Like I did on about 20% of that. The other 80% I've just told other people. And it's really about doing it, really about just being disciplined and taking the extra 30 seconds to just prospect. Um, so, uh, we make friends. Uh, ask, and if you're in a little longer scenario, uh, you know, you definitely want to be more interested in them than interested in what they can do for you, right? And the great question is, what do you do for a living? And the law of reciprocity will kick in in that most people, if you if you want, to, want them to ask you something, you ask them the same question, they'll come back and ask you. It's part of the social contract that we have that says, what do you do for a living? You wait, you hear through, and you wait, pause, there's some silence. What are they generally gonna do? Ask you, fill in the blank with, fill in the, the space, what do you do for a living? Now, the trick is the technical, don't do the technical term. We call it throw up all over them about legal shield. <laughs> oh my God, it's the greatest success I spent. I got to tell you all about this legal thing. You got to have an attorney. Everybody needs an attorney. We all need an attorney every day, all day. Oh my God, you got to get this thing. It's only $30 a month, man. Would you buy it? <laughs> right? Oh, get away from me, you freak. <laughs> uh, I mean, I understand people get excited and you want to have some enthusiasm in your voice, but you obviously don't want to overdo it you'll push them away, right? We want to draw them in. I don't know if this would be for you. There, there may or may not be a fit. We do have folks that are making over a million dollars a year and over 400 folks that made over a million dollars. I don't know if you'd be interested in that or not. True. And no, 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 I'd be interested. Or you might have a shark on your hands. So it is money motivated. So when you meet your friends and family, again, same thing. Tell them a little bit about what you do. Find out more about what they do. You know, I'm expanding right now. Listen, all my main goal is just to share with people who we are and what we do. It may not be for you, but you might know some people we can help. If I sent you a video, would you watch it? When you're wrapping up the, the evening type of thing. Uh, so be normal, <laughs> right? That's a big, a big thing we want to try and be. Maybe that was normal. <laughs> some people are like that. Da, 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 da. And maybe they need to like to tone it down now. Whereas other people are like, well, I got this. This deal I've been working on called Legal Shield. I don't know if it'd be for you or not, but I was wondering if I could maybe send you something. <laughs> it is, and so you got to create that, find that sort of sweet spot uh, for you as an individual, uh, and that they see you as the same person they already know you as, right? So, why are we here today? That's the first part of my training. Hopefully that helps. So why are we here today? Gerald, your performance club qualified, legend, 242 months, three months, make performance club. Do a fair amount of business solutions, 
to a good amount of team building, most of the group's solutions. Perfect. Why are you here today? To learn from you. Awesome. Cool. Me. What about anything deeper? Because I mean, uh, well, I've already taken like four pages of notes about recruiting. Okay, so that is an area you might like to expand into yes. a little bit. How about learning something new? Learning something new is a great reason to be here, absolutely, especially for new people, but anybody can. All right, Jeff, what about you? Why are you here today? Already have a successful business. Your business would not be affected if you did not show up today. Unless Unless got we just are moving forward. This it's the next ring and the next ring after that. Larry Smith always talks about the lifestyle we want is through recruiting. I think I we need to do better with her. Um, I'm with Shara. We do a lot of, a lot of small things. The recruiting is what we got to do. No use, Susan. Because I love helping people and I want to help more people. Sometimes you just need a slip kick in the sure. Who's that? Yes, but we all time to time. It's amazing how that inverse of relationship from success to growth happens. Like when you want more, you want to be you're you're in growth mode. You're really working hard and you're willing to put in the time and the effort and the discipline and the sacrifices. But once you start hitting certain levels and finding that level of comfort that you wanted, how easy it is to start to sort of making different choices and, and kind of get off, what Brian Curtis says, get off the elevator, get off that growth curve, right? And so that's the reason to keep coming back, keep plugging <laughs> in, to keep showing up, right? Because the biggest thing is, I talked about my kids all the time when they were growing up, it's your potential. What's your potential? That way I'm not putting a demand or a limit on them. They can determine for themselves. And I think that's a huge question we have to ask our associates. What's your potential? What do you see as your potential in this business? What do you see as your potential in life? If you allow them to set their own standard and vision and help them to set that own standard and vision, they're going to work for their own efforts and their own goals versus you telling them what you think is possible for them. I believe we're going to hear to get, we want to campaign, can gain a competitive advantage. You know, definitely people are uh, in a situation where it's competitive out there in the world. Right. Uh, there's always, you know, no one's going to really honestly give you a full handout, right? There may be little things along the way, but no one's doing that. So ask yourself what your strengths are and ask yourself what you need to work on. And then really ultimately visualize your success. You know, what does success look like to you? And once you hit that spot, enjoy it for a while and then ask yourself what else? Right. I mean, I've had to do that multiple times and I'm living it now. I mean, you know, when I knew my daughter was going to be off to college, I wanted to be able to travel, have a blast and take them to things and create, continue to create memories. And I'll be straight, man. This last year has been tough. You know, when you're not traveling, when I'm not living the lifestyle that I work for, because you feel like the world's telling you you can't. You know, it was a tough year. I, I realized I don't work. At home, I work from home. Yep. Right. I want to get out. I need to be in front of employees. I need to be in front of people. I need to be doing lunches. I need to be doing briefings. I need to be doing my thing. And I wasn't. There's all this, you know, and I, I don't I don't curse Zoom because it does give us the ability to connect with people on a different level, but at least a wider range in some ways. But that wasn't. So I'm just like, give me the give me the shots and I'm on my way. I wear a mask where I need to and don't where I won't. And, I'm going, right? I think the world's ready to get back out. Yeah. The whole world. <laughs> so ultimately, we are six inches from success. Uh, we're, oh, I haven't done some of these trainings in a while. I like to call it a loop to loop, right? So we program, our, we want, I'm going to give you the potential of the program and success. Gosh, I haven't done this in a while. Okay, so let me, yeah, let me rewind the tape a little bit here. We've heard that we're told no like 10,000 times by the time we're five years old. 
right? Something like that. Um, and that there's some programming we're going to get from our parents buried in the story. You can't help it. Whether your parents are present, over present, or not present, there is going to be some programming and some beliefs about yourself that you're going to get from those relationships. Those are the most important relationships, obviously, the most impactful relationships in your life. Um, but at a, some point, there's a little voice in your head. You know which voice that is? The one that just told you yes, <laughs> right? There is a voice in your head. And the real question you have to ask yourself is, what is that voice telling you? And the more important question to ask yourself is, how can I change that voice? How can I create that voice to tell me the things that I need to hear in order to be the person that I want to be? And there are actually ways to do that. Okay. So those are, I should have all this written down on my slides, but number one, you have to first think it. You have to think about what it is you want, what you want your voice to be, what you want to say to yourself. <clears throat> Number two, you want to write that down. You want to physically sit down, journal, notepad, whatever, and write down the things that you want to be able to say to yourself. Um, and what we generally call those are affirmations, right? Those affirmations then um, we'll start to, and by thinking it, writing it, reading it out loud, hearing it, processing it, those are the senses that are going to create a new loop, a new language, a new thought process, a new self-talk for you. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in one, you know, in 10 nights, I mean, there's no telling exactly when the thing is because it's slow and gradual over time. But if you, you know, if you write down, I'm a money magnet, money flows to me. I help people on a regular basis and that creates a huge bank account for me. I show up in my community, show up in my, so this, this is, and this, this, so that's kind of the foundation of stuff I'm going to talk to you about in a few minutes when I talk about the 10 core philosophies. But that loop to loop, and when you start to understand that, the things you read, all that stuff's going to program you anyway. The things you read are going to program you. You have to decide what it is you want to read. The things you hear are going to program you. You have to decide what you want to hear. The things you say are going to program you. You just have to decide what is the line, what, what are you going to be saying? <clears throat> right? And the things you hear yourself saying are going to be the biggest sort of uh, program of all. Because now you're, you're thinking it, you're saying it, you're hearing it. And that creates something. That to me, if you get that and you start using that, to me is the biggest training I can provide for anybody in the world, 100%. So uh, this portion of the training, Jim Rohn says, over the years, I've sought out ideas, principles, and strategies to life's challenges. I've come up with four simple words that can make life worth living. Now we're making living worthwhile. Uh, first, life is worthwhile if you learn. If you learn. Okay, yeah, my gym room isn't very good. We always want to be learning. We always want to be growing. I think, why am I here? We said, I want to learn. I want to get better, right? Life is worthwhile if you try. That's another big thing we just stress with our kids. They play lacrosse, they played soccer, they did swimming, they did track, they did basketball, they tried softball, even though I wasn't really into softball. I was like, let's play basketball. <laughs> I admit, maybe there was a little bit, but not too much. I mean, it's like, try it. If it really wasn't a thing, um, you know, our middle daughter, she was a generally good athlete. She was actually voted uh, as the athlete of her class uh, as for the females. Uh, and she her track was her big thing. She broke her ankle. She was good in the hurdles in middle school. She broke her ankle, second, first meet, third hurdle, eighth grade year. She was going to win district. By the end of the year, it still wasn't right. She thought, well, I can throw a shot with a broken ankle. Just sat up there and, you know, now granted, the fact she was 5'11, about 150, you know, big girl, didn't hurt. 
but she go out and won her first meet, first time, set the school record. Wow. Yeah, in eighth grade, middle school, but it was. So, okay, maybe shot put is the thing. Yep, shot put is definitely the thing. And I had a goal of her whole career of going to state. And finally, her senior year, last meet, district meet, she got, these were the take top two. She was third, but she got the qualifying thing, which was a huge thing because you can be in a competition, but if you have your own standard, you can still win, even if there are people better than you. Yeah. You don't, I believe, you don't have to be number one in order to be a winner. Right? Some people may disagree with that. And I'm not saying every kid should get participation awards, although I personally believe that under fourth grade, they should get participation awards because we want kids just to show up. It shouldn't be about competition at that age too much. I mean, it's okay to keep score. That's part of the game, but I'm glad you're here. Be here. Congratulations. Here's your orange slice. Here's your piece of slice of pizza, and here's your freaking medal. And if by the time they're fourth or fifth grade, they've got a bunch of medals, so be it. They'll figure out competition later. Anyway, um, so she tried She tried swimming. She went to state her first her freshman year. She, uh, soccer team, she blew it in a way. Her junior year in the playoffs, she's sharing keeper with two times because she never stood up and said, I want to be the starting keeper. It's like, I'm willing to do whatever is best for the team. Keeper had a meltdown, missed a goal. And she's like, if I had to go back, I wish I would have told coach, I'm ready. And put me in a place of her because she's melting down. Learning experience, right? She did make state her senior year. So then she goes out to college and she's like, I'm not really good enough to be a uh, division one goalkeeper. I'm not good. I could do track in college, but it'd be a small college. I want to go to Oregon State. She goes on campus for her interview and look around. And they got all the clubs there. And one of the rowing coaches goes, Six foot girl <laughs> with wide shoulders. Come over here. I want to talk to you. Have you thought about rowing? No, not really. Have you done sports? Yeah, a little. Step <laughs> into my class. Try out for rowing. Sure enough, she gets locked onto the rowing. She walks on. They give her much money for books just to keep her around. End of the year, they say, we're going to scholarship you back for the year. So she scholarship her freshman year. Rolls her sophomore year on varsity. Junior year, they, that sophomore year, they identify her in the national team. She goes and works out her sophomore year as kind of the big ID camp, like 100 kids, even though only, you know, and then next year, COVID year, she's like, Dad, all I did was show up to every single Zoom workout. I think I was the only kid who showed up to every single workout and meeting on Zoom. Just show up, right? Last year, she gets accepted to the national U23 team, makes the varsity eight vote, number one eight vote, goes to Czech Republic, wins the world championship. Wow. Yeah. So life is worthwhile right. if you try, right? She just said, I'm going to try and see what happens. Uh, fully scholarship, the fact they told her that we'll pay for your fifth year because she gets another year because of COVID, we'll pay for your master's as well. Um, NCAA has said across the board that every, I think it's another year of eligibility. Just to make it fair. So, life is worthwhile if you stay. You got to stick and stay. You got to be a part of it. Show up over and over and over again. Uh, you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. Sometimes it's tempting to quit when, or slow down or back out when you're ups, when the ups happen, right? But many times it's the, the downs that makes us feel like, oh God, maybe this isn't for me. Stick and stay. And then lastly, life is for quality care. As I've been said a thousand times, people don't know how, care how much you know, they wanna know how much you care. And there's probably the number one thing about building a team, it's building those relationships, knowing that they're, you're here for them, knowing that they're, you know, that you're supporting them, that you care about them and their family. You can take your business seriously, but don't take and your but and your goals seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. A sense of humor is part of the leadership, getting along with people, getting things done, Dwight Eisenhower, right? We want to have fun, we want to be upbeat, we want to, you know, question is when you walk in a room, do you brighten a room or darken a room? Right? I'd say we're all room brighteners in this room, certainly, but we want to make sure that you're that person. If you're having a bad day, 
before you get out of the car, when you get out of the car, go to the trunk, put all that bad stuff in the trunk, slam that trunk, walk into that appointment, walk into that meeting, walk into those people with all that stuff, lift it off. If you're there for good energy and how you can help people and how you can serve people, care about people and have fun doing it. So questions are, am I doing the right things to achieve my goals? And am I doing enough of the right things to achieve my goals? If you're not achieving your goals, am I doing it right? Am I doing it enough? Indeed. Indeed. I didn't, did I, admit, I didn't do the disclaimer right up top. Very few of these are my own ideas. <laughs> A few of them are mixed in there. But definitely Nick does an amazing training about that. And the other one I love about is uh, pain. You know, what's more painful? Doing it and not succeeding or not doing it and not knowing, right? So am I doing it right? Am I doing it enough? How long do I keep trying? Well, how long do successful people keep going? They don't quit, right? Stay with it. All you can do is set new goals. Whether you hit your goal or miss your goal, just gonna set a new goal. That's why it's so important to have a time frame. By this quarter, by this month, by this week, today, what are my activity goals, right? And then, because when you're setting those goals and you're working towards it, you can ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? Always make sure you're asking, what's the best that can happen? And focus on that positive. Uh, that's another big deal on intention is focusing on the positive, focusing on what you do want, focusing on the solution, being a solution oriented person, right? We focus on the best. Okay, that's what I promise. By the way. I encourage you to live legendary. And I am just getting started. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, no, I, uh, there's no doubt that I got a lot of my growth and experience from the masters here in legal skill. Chris, how much time do we have left? Big enough. That's right, John Gardner. Chris, how much? Uh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, okay, perfect. Oh, is it painful, Larry Smith always said, well, working 40 hours a week is painful. Exactly. Choose well, your pain. Right. More yeah. right. Pick your pain. All right. Oh, look at that. I didn't get the memo. Sorry. We're going to talk about painful. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, come on. Oh, I know. Play from the current New slide. share. No, play from the current slide. I think, that, I, think I needed to switch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I went to a different. Oh, did you? There you go. Okay, perfect. Okay, yes, I was younger then. All right, a few pounds lighter. COVID still COVID-19. I'm seeing a blue and orange color. Right. Yeah. All right. So, um, yes, I put together this training when I had the opportunity to run a big, I knew that we needed a big team event. We needed to run. And our team was really growing at one point. Uh, you know, one point our organization had over a thousand recruits in a month. Uh, some of you remember KO Camp Billabong. Mm -hmm. He had six figure ring his first year, he had platinum his first year. That was part of Gene Leiter's organization, who was one of the first associates that I brought on. I say I. Sean Stevenson and Gene Leiter went to college together. Sean was my sponsor. And then we all lived together in houses and apartments and stuff. And then Gene went off to be in the um, cruise ship business. He was an assistant cruise director. You know the love boat? He was Julie. Okay. Nice. So, is that Gene? Gene Leiter, yeah. Is he doing that now? Uh, no, he's freaking somewhere retired, basically. <laughs> it's a little uh, Yeah. So, uh, Gene would come off the boat and it was usually like Christmas or around December and November and it was rainy and he's like, See you guys going back on the boat, you know, to the Bahamas and all these other places. So she's John Stevenson and Larry, Larry, Larry knew Larry and Gene knew Larry. And I told you the story about Larry. 
earned over ten thousand dollars over ten years based on ten weeks of work, and basically opened the Northwest. Um, so she, Sean and Jane, especially Sean, was committed entrepreneur. Just never wanted to have a job. I had a job. Like I said, I was doing fine. Well, Sean brought me on board and said, if you let Gene come live with you for a few months to get his, you know, land legs back and kind of establish himself back in the mainland, I'll put Gene underneath you. So that's actually how it ended up that I ended up with a six-figure ring earner on my team. And then a guy was out doing a meeting like this and brought in another guy from the team, showed the presentation. That was K.O. Camp Billabong. He owned a huge mortgage company. You saw where that was headed about 2006, 2007, and 2008, he jumped out of that and jumped into legal school full time and still got memberships, still got growth, still got people How's in that whole team. K.O.? Yeah. Uh, he's fine. I, he just decided that he needed to go back into, he went into equities and like, you know, hundred thousand dollar job deals a week type stuff. He was a pretty smart guy. Yeah, smart. smart enough to still be getting his residuals right. for yeah, sure, right. and still has team growing and left a left a legacy for sure. So, so um, I don't know how that all ties in. I just want to kind of give you a little background. Oh, so I was doing this live event for, uh, and I and Jeff Bell said, "Hey, if you need any help, let me know." You know, our CEO, brand new CEO at the time. I'm like, team event. So I got him, I locked him in, we had a big team event. And I'm like, all right, if I had to put one training together for 30 minutes for my whole organization, I had an event important with the CEO in there, what would I want to train on? What would I want to, to share with my organization that could make a big difference in our business and in our lives? It was 100% philosophies. It's the 10 core, and I came up with like the 10 core philosophies. What are our philosophies? Because ultimately those will drive us. So we have the 10 core commitments. That's what we do. And those are great. You've got to have activities. You can't just think your way to success. I visualize a million dollars showing up in my bank account. It's not going to happen. Okay. Oh my God. You, now, don't get me wrong. You can visualize being a millionaire and then are you willing to take the steps, develop the plans, come up with the processes to then become a millionaire, right? You got to have the vision first, but the vision alone is not enough. But would you agree the activities alone are not enough? Right. You can be doing all kinds of activity. I mean, I figured out there were days where I didn't do anything with Legal Shield, but I was very busy. That's right. <laughs> well, it wasn't taking me where I really wanted to go visualize, so my vision, so I had to sort of back up and make sure I'm doing the 10 core commitment. So those are what we do, important, but I want you to consider how we think. Because to me, ultimately, you can be busy as a one arm paper hanger. I know, right? It was like my dad's. <laughs> paper hanger, somebody's, okay, anyway. Um, so how we think ultimately says, these are the activities that are going to result in what we want. And, and then how we do the activities is a result of how we think as well, right? How well we do that. So I love this quote on success, a progressive realization of a worthwhile goal or endeavor by Napoleon Hill, author of Think You Grow Rich, right? The 10 core philosophies. Oh, sorry, I got an extra slide in there. I apologize. Okay. I believe number one, the basis, the foundation. I think you'll find this in all person development. I am responsible, right? I do not blame others. I realize that my greatest power and my responsibility is my power of choice. When you say, well, you know, because here's one example, and I'm going to, kind of get deep with some stuff here. I don't know if that's okay with everybody. But would you agree there were people that born up, were born and grew up in a terrible household and ended up as terrible people? Yes. Would you agree there were people that born and were raised in a terrible household and ended up as amazing people? Yes. Same thing and both could blame, frankly, in some way, their parents. Right. But one took responsibility to decide how they wanted to be, and the others would just continually blame 
your parents, right? right? So it's an interesting little dynamic. Like my dad was an alcoholic. I knew one thing I never wanted to be was an alcoholic. That's taking responsibility for your action. You can almost blame him for that, but you know, ultimately you take responsibility and you make power in your choice. Okay, so I think that again is number one, the foundation of all of it. Am I being responsible in this situation? When I'm not happy, when I'm feeling stressed, when I'm feeling tension between somebody, when there's a conflict, how can I take responsibility? Okay, so that to me is number one. Number two, I have a positive attitude. I look for the good people in situations. I realize that I alone can and do control my attitude. I want to make sure I put both of those in there because it's always that double of, you, do you have the power? Yes or no? Yes. Will you use the power? Yes or no? Yes, right? So it's, well, yes, you just have to decide. I will use the power. I have the power, I need to use the power. Decision that the individual will make. Right. Right, so we, we talk about the people outside the room. Uh, there are people out there who don't even a, realize they have the power, B, they do, and they just kind of don't want to use it. They don't want to take it there. So it's can and do control my attitude. Because things will happen to us, true or true. Yeah. Negative things will show up in life, right? And so when it does, you got to say, okay, what's my attitude towards that? And then it opens your mind to how can this, how can I learn from this terrible situation? How can I, if I'm taking responsibility, look at that as what is my responsibility in this matter? And you know what? It might just be that um, I'm going to, control how I think about it. I'm gonna look the good in that situation, right? It was terrible. Somebody did do something to me. I can't blame them for that, but I could take responsibility and say, I'm gonna have a positive attitude about it. And I'm gonna look for the good in that situation. I commit to simple daily disciplines. Habits and results are created through my daily actions, which I alone ultimately control. Now, it may have been um, a decision you made pick an age of a kid, say eight years ago, you got an eight-year-old, you've got to have some daily disciplines and actions that are a result of the choices you made eight years and nine months prior to that, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, we do have responsibilities that we need to work our life around, right? But if we take responsibility, control our attitude about it, Sometimes, so that what it means is, if I got to take my kids to school, if I got to pick them up, okay, I got six hours in between. I got to walk, I got to make sure they do their homework and feed them and get them to bed. So I've got 45 minutes between the time I put them to bed and the time I go to bed to watch TV or put in a good video, do some training, have a team call, whatever it is. Those are the disciplines and the habits that I don't believe, you know, and you got to ask yourself, if somebody with kids makes a million dollars, why can't I? I got kids, you know, somebody who's decided at some point they want to volunteer for their church, right? Some folks are believe in church to the degree that they don't do anything on Sundays. Those are choices that they make. I mean, I got kids on my basketball team, I won't show up on Sundays. I got to plan, I plan around it just to honor that. Um, so, you have control. There may be control you made a decision for previously, but ultimately you got to have control. Ultimately, you know, then we start to get better at it where we plan our day the night before. We start to really write down so we're conscious of the choices and the uh, decisions and the health and the, and the uh, results that are created through our daily actions. Okay. I harness the power of habit. I know that habits will determine my health, my wealth and happiness, and I work to improve those habits. Uh, it, it's amazing how a carrot at the end of the stick can create big changes. For example, when I was running cross country and track in high school and college, I had no problem showing up to the workouts. As soon as I didn't have a race on the schedule, my workouts would suffer, right? Um, what was the other thing about that? Well, you know, going to the trips, you know, a goal to reach a new level. 
Uh, what goals is to hit a, a number, right? Those are all things that can help determine your behaviors, which determines your habit, right? I mean, I make calls now every day, not every day, but most every day. Like I go into my office and I just start making calls I don't really think about. It. Like I got the list, I got the group, I got the process, and I just go, right? Um, so how do we improve those habits? Well, maybe a mastermind group is a good example of how to improve, you know, a little, maybe 1% things. Um, you know, that's why we're here, learning and training, figure out how we can get better at things. So harnessing uh, that power of habit, because it ultimately determines everything. Oh, the other thing was when I was playing basketball, I would do yoga so I could keep playing basketball. Then when I stopped playing basketball because I jacked up my knee, guess what? My yoga started going away a little bit as well. I, mean, I definitely need to get back into the gym, which is cool because my neighbor, and I am in the gym now, coaching helps me stay in shape as well. Um, but I need to get back to the yoga thing, that's for sure. I use the power of intention. I create a strong vision of my life and my successes. This pulls me forward, helps me communicate effectively and make positive choices. So it is amazing how when you have a vision that's very clear, how your choices start to form differently because that vision pulls you forward, right? If, if you do want something bigger and better, that's where we have to analyze our philosophies and start thinking in different ways. So this is really a guide with a lot of um, places for notes and things to write through the book as well. So you can really use it as like a guidebook and a, and a workbook along the way. Um, not on Amazon yet. I got. I want to get. I got. You know, it's funny how it's like a whole other business to develop that. And you know, I'm never going to make a million dollars. Oh, I did want to ask though. Chris, what's your favorite charity? Because I know you got Global team. Orphan Prevention right now. Global Orphan Prevention. Until after right now. Tuesday. Wednesday will be different. <laughs> well, for now, um, uh, 10% of all the book sales that I do today will go to that charity. Awesome. Thank you. That's something I'm 100% committed to uh, is taking those books. And put them on. Doesn't that excite you all? Yay! Yeah. Yay. How much are the books? So five hundred dollars. Yeah. That's right. Priceless. <laughs> Priceless. Uh, they are fourteen ninety five. Uh, they will be fourteen ninety five on Amazon. I'm doing a deal for ten dollars today, and then three for twenty five, five for forty, and then buy them for a bunch of people. You get uh, ten for sixty. The yes. amount of Christmas presents. How many do you have? I got about 40. Oh. Yeah. 10 for how many? 60. Yeah. And I couldn't find my square reader. So if you want to use credit card, we can plug it in. Yeah, Venmo? Venmo, Zell, Zen, yeah, I got all of them. Okay. Venmo, Cash App, stuff like that. We're close. Thank you for waiting. Let's take a second. Who we got on here? Hey, Danny. Got Willie Crooks, hey, top Willie. of her head. Where are you at? Where? Can you unmute her? She can. They can all unmute. Oh, there's Danny. Cool. Merry Christmas, Danny. How was our event uh, last night? It was good. I really enjoyed it. Oh, sorry. Hold one on. second. One second. One second. That was mine. There we go. How was your event last night? It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Cool. So I did a little pizza party in Greeley. I'm gonna with I'm gonna support Danny and help build a team in Greeley. because uh, I wish one girl would go there and watch my dog play basketball and hang out in the beautiful campus. It's a really cool little town. It's cool. So we're growing. We're growing. I got one pretty pretty sharp couple uh, that checked it out. So the hope is uh, we'll be building and growing. So great job. Danny's doing a great job down there, uh, making executive and has a little success center right there on the yeah. one of the main drives. Yeah. Willie, where are you calling in from? He's muted. Can you unmute? I'm calling from Denver. Denver, nice. Glad you're on. Willie, can you, you take your 
Cameron, your screen and just tilt it a little bit. <laughs> your nose. There you go. Look at that beautiful Yay! smile. <laughs> we love it. That's a great smile. Thank you. <laughs> right. What did you like best of everything you saw so far today? What did I like best? Yeah. <clears throat> the information that you gave us that I wrote down about my plan to win. Nice. <laughs> Power of attention. Oh, because when the word I use for that also is serendipity. Ever be in a situation where you've thought about something and visualized it and all of a sudden, like, oh my God, that just happened and that was something I thought about, right? I'm, I mean, I remember even back my cross country and track days, I was running 800 meters and I visualized coming around the corner and how it made me feel and how I would bump my hands and move my legs and make everything happen. And I was gonna break two minutes. I broke two minutes, 0 0.03 seconds. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. I still think the timer was slow. I'm gonna go with that. Right? Break two minutes in the 800. But, but that visualization, man, when you picture it, you start seeing it happen and then things show up in your life. You're like, oh my God, I just thought about that. And we're not talking about Google when you mention something and the ad comes up. Talking about real life, right? <laughs> I show up. I know there's no substitute for work and I harness the power of like minds engaged in a common cause. Uh, certainly mastermind is an example of this, but the people close to you. Uh, my spouse is a chiropractor and ran, has run her successful business now for 25 years as well. And certainly there was times in our business when we first started that I'd have a good month, she'd have a bad month, I'd have a bad month, she'd have a good month, and we just kind of made it work. A lot of the, we did the baby pass quite a bit. You know, I would call a, a group or a prospect and the old, would Tuesdays or Thursdays work better for you? Mornings or afternoon, two o'clock or three o'clock. But my options were when she was not at work because that's when I didn't have to manage daycare or manage care for our kids. So it seemed like it was being very professional working around her schedule so we could cover our kids right you know um and so that was showing up like i could have said oh i got kids i don't have time to work no figure it out you got to show up daily um and so you know that's through daily disciplines all that stuff sort of piles into are you gonna not that you don't take a weekend off or a day off or this or that from time to time when you have a strong vision and you start to really discipline yourself you realize it actually creates time for you to be able to do some of those things and, and have a little more flexible schedule, this one that you choose. I focus on progress. I know I must grow. We are happiest when we are growing and challenged, believe it or not. Uh, you know, this last example, this last year was an example for me of like, I'm happy when I'm doing things. That's why I took on coaching an eighth grade team for basketball. And that's why I, you know, went ahead and put the book out because I want to be challenged, I want to be growing, and I find my business actually grows more when I'm growing, when I'm, when I'm doing new things. And as long as I keep my priorities right, and I'm not spending all day marketing a book, where I market a book, where I wrote the book, is when I'd go on, we'd be on a vacation or be on a trip or travel, and I just pull up my laptop in some inspiring place and write a new chapter. I don't think I wrote a chapter. I did the editing in my office, as far as writing the book, that was all out traveling, being inspired, trying to put it, yeah. Um, so I may not be perfect, but I'm improving. Another big key. We don't want to be too hard on ourselves. I'm engaged in the process. And this is really important. Probably the most important segment on here is I measure my results, right? Because we can feel like we're making progress because we're busy. We can feel like we're making progress because we made our activity that day. Right? And certainly activity comes before results, not just in the phone book, but in real life. But if you're doing the activity and not the results, that goes back to, am I doing it right? And am I doing it enough? Most people, it's not that they're not doing it right, they're just not doing it enough. But you can find yourself doing a lot and not getting the results you want, and you gotta look back and say, am I doing it correctly? And that's where that power of mastermind or having a mentor can come into play. So here's what I'm doing, I'm doing the numbers, I'm doing what you told me, I'm doing what we agreed upon, and yet, you know, two weeks have gone by, I'm not seeing the results. Two months have gone by, I'm not seeing the results. 
So that's where we focus on progress. Hey, I will admit I'm better. And, you know, they say a rocket ship's off course 90% of the time to the moon because it's constantly making adjustments. Yep. Right? But it's, you know, so moving forward is the first key, and then doing it right is the next. <coughs> and measuring the results, see how we're doing. I contribute. I engage in activities which help the greater good in my and my friends, in my okay, with my friends, family, and in my community. It's still a typo. In there. God darn it. <laughs> anyway, um, just imagine if we had, if we were known in the world as legal shield associates who are constantly doing positive things in their community. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And I believe we do. I mean, I know it's just throwing mine. I mean, work with my rotary, charity auctioneering, uh, you know, showing up for things, volunteering, running basketball camps, things like that. But legal shield, legal shield, legal people, I want them to know me and know what I do. Right? I, I'm not, I don't want to have to approach every single person and uh, hey, it's halftime of the basketball game. Let me tell you about Legal Shield. <laughs> right? I don't want to be that guy. Never want to be that guy in a community that was constantly trying to, hey, you really need your own business, don't you? You know, you're not making that funny. You should move with us. Right? I just don't want to be that guy. But I, so I want to be a guy that people, and you, I think we should show ourselves as somebody who's engaged, who's working for the good of other people, who's positive in our community, and by the way, does Legal Shield. Okay. So that's where I feel like we contribute um, with our family and friends as well. I mean, when's the last time we try to do something cool for our family? You know, and I, you know, I want to make, I want my kids to understand the value of money and what money can do for them. And so we've taken on some fairly amazing trips. You know, the uh, the trip to Bahamas took them on that, but it's not all free. And I've always told them, um, your freedom comes with responsibility. If you're handling your responsibilities, you get to have the freedom. Schoolwork doesn't happen. Weekends with friends don't happen. Covering all your bases, doing everything that you need to do, putting your, keeping your stuff together, you're going to have a ton of freedom, not just around here, but in life. And our big mission was to raise good adults. We didn't want to raise good kids. We want to raise good adults. We wanted to instill with them the values and the philosophies that say, if you work hard, you get a lot. It's worth the extra 10 to 20 percent you got to put in. When you know, I found out that I could get tickets that weren't $400 a piece, I'm like, let's go to a ball game. Would you like to go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've never been to an NFL game. We don't have an NFL except for Seattle. No one wants to go there. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, I accept abundance. There again. So that's the next step, right? We're doing our responsibilities. We're doing the right stuff. It's okay to accept the abundance that comes with that, right? A lot of times I think that, well, money can't buy happiness, right? Which tells you money's negative, right? And we know, we've all heard a quote by now that it isn't, uh, that says money the root of all evil, right? And we know that's not correct. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what it actually says in the Bible, right? And so, you know, money's a tool to help other people. You know, I'm sure that my philosophy and the philosophy I've planned with my kids is the more successful you are, the more you can help other people, mm -hmm. right? The more you have, the more you can give, right? I mean, I'm sure there are some generous people out there making $40,000 a year for their family, but how generous can you be? You know, that if you, you're making 140, 240, whatever the number is, that fits for your lifestyle, the more it is, the more generous you can be, the more you can give to other people. And so you need to accept that abundance. There's, and, and, I, and, and sometimes, you know, anybody here, I don't have the money for like start the business. Mm -hmm. I don't have the money, right? And I just want to like shake with people and go, actually, you keep telling yourself that, guess what? That's what you gotta keep. That's gonna be true, right? How do I get the money? Where do I, what do I do to change my circumstances? Um, because is there a shortage of money? Mm -hmm. Let me ask this question. Are there more millionaires or less millionaires every single year in, in the world? More, more, right? In fact, like every day, there's new millionaires created. So there's more. So there's, there's plenty. I mean, we, there's no um, shortage of friends. 
Sometimes you start feeling a little lonely or whatever. When's the last time you invested in a new friendship? When's the last time you, you know, ask somebody to go up for a cup of coffee or let's go out for a night in town. Let's hit a movie and go to dinner before. Just with a friend or maybe, you know, when's the last time we went on a date with our spouse? You know, I mean, it's funny because Laura's, my wife's pretty um, kind of pragmatic or system oriented in a way she's like Thursday night date night. I'm like, honey, in the last <laughs> eight weeks, I, I'm not going to remember all of them. We've been to Napa for a conference with her millionaire mastermind group, like her platinum group. We went to Napa, hung out, drew oh, the gold. I thought you meant the auto parts store. No. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to do that because her, her, yeah. her uh, whistle wipe is bad on her car, but if she doesn't do it, I'll do it when I get home. <laughs> no, Napa Wine Country, you know. right? In Sedona, so, um, Sono Sonoma. Sonoma. And did a gondola through downtown Napa. That was super fun. Downtown Napa. Yeah, there's yeah, a little river down. through there, and you can ride the, in this kind of gondola. Not mm. this kind of gondola. Right. Uh, right. I know that's everybody's like, like there's a gondola? No, like the Italian push pole gosh. gondola. Yeah. I wonder if they have the same name. And I know, isn't that weird? But it's a mode, it's an interesting mode of transportation. Well, that's so. a gondola. No, it's a gondola. Right. Gondola versus gondola. I don't mm. know. Now it's the um, pronunciation over that. Oh, we went to um, Southern California for a concert, literally mm. flew to Southern California for Halloween so we could watch Oingo Boingo, her favorite band, mm -hmm. uh, play live, the former members of Oingo Boingo. Uh, and down there, we just spent time on the beach and some time with the brothers and had a great time. And there's little things you give and take. Like, she knows that I really want to make sure that I'm maximizing our retirement accounts. But I also really love these kind of trips. So we could have stayed in a hotel. We could have rented a car. We have the money for that. That's not where I want to put my priorities. So we stayed with one brother one night, the other brother another night, your friends another night, run, drove a friend's car because we asked. He said, sure, no problem. We got an extra car driving around. We hung out with Jerry Cohen. A lot of you guys know Jerry from Legal Shield. He's like, wow. I know, I know. <laughs> but he knows the guy at the door, so our concert ticket didn't cost him anything. Wow. Right? We use, you know, we use credit cards for our business, pay them off every month. I do not carry interest. I haven't paid interest in years, but uh, the trip is free because we use points. Mm -hmm. So we literally spent that Southern California trip hanging out on the beaches about $200. Wow, that's awesome. Total, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, those are the things you do when you start to really look at your philosophies and look at what you want to accomplish and figure things out and do little things. And when you get the basic structure, you can start filling the cracks with cool little opportunities that uh, most people are overwhelmed by. Um, where were we last weekend? Oh, we went to San Francisco for the day. A day. I've never woke up in the morning, got on a plane, went somewhere, came back that night, slept in my own bed. Because normally, when you go somewhere, you're like, well, I'm going to put the money on a plane ticket. Yeah. I may as well stay a couple of days. Well, we've been to San Francisco. In fact, that weekend with Napa, we were flying out late Sunday night. So we spent all day riding through the park, Golden Gate Park, on bikes. Uh, and not all day. We did something else in the morning. Anyway, it was just a blast. It's fun. Huh? It's fun. Oh, yeah. And so we want to see Amelia play her game at San Francisco. And I coach one of the girls that plays for the University of San Francisco. Kai Deering and uh, her husband, Mark, met us down there. My mm -hmm. sister-in-law and, uh, and sister and aunt, aunt-in-law, whatever. Uh, our family met us there as well and just hung out for a day. Rode scooters around and took the bar and Look for you know little ways to save money and have that kind of lifestyle, you know. Here this weekend, go, go. <laughs> so anyway, my point is, we don't have date nights. We have date weekends. Yeah, right. I mean, like we really spent more time, and now with the kids gone, we need to like focus on, you know, the shift is how can we make sure we're staying connected and having fun and growing mm -hmm. our relationship together as well because you don't have the kids to like focus on anyone. You know, they're out of the house. <sighs> they come back. I hope so. I hope so. Sometimes they come back to live. Fine. You know what? I'll be totally fine with that. I, you know, I'm crazy, and I, other people say that, but I'm like, I love my kids, man. I love hanging out. I, love them. I make points to go make sure I'm spending time. Uh, you know, I I'd be totally fine. In fact, I thought about adopting and raising a whole another teenager. 
Bubba was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess any of them. Why are you around, man? <laughs> I'm smart with my, oh, look at this. I'm smart with their resources and I'm not wasteful. I mean, that plugs right into like, you know, how to use credit cards and how to use tax advantages and how to use different tools that are out there. How do you keep your credit score high and still have those advantages? That's right? something I should teach kids. Uh, 100%. And believe me, I tell oh, my kids. Cards, man. You know, in yeah. fact, I mean, yes, they should, but I take responsibility for teaching my kids that. That's true. Right. Right. And, and in some ways, I don't care what they teach in school because I'll make sure that my kids know yeah. what they need to. I mean, I do care. I want society to know about this stuff generally. But, and of course, now I think everybody's at the point where they realize that all the opportunity, all the information in the world is in the palm of your hands. Yeah. All you got to do. Kids mm -hmm. are smarter now, I think, than we were about a lot of that stuff because they read a blog or they just look it up or they just, you know. All right, number ten. Fill in your blank. What's your core philosophy? Mm -hmm. Don't feel like I cut ten percent out now. This is the good stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, I thought about maybe doing a tenth and coming up with eleven, which is yours. But anyway, um, so. I'll go uh, give you guys an opportunity to share. Maybe it's a, a motto for your life. Um, something you sort of um, feel like describes you in a way. Um, some examples, uh, I work as hard for myself as I would for somebody else. You guys heard me say that earlier today. That's really one of my core philosophies. Um, time is the most precious asset is another big one. Uh, David Brewer use it all the time. He's really been a friend and a mentor in the business but to me over the years growing up in the same area, uh, you know, and been a year ahead of me in the business. So um, what are yours? Who wants to share? Raise your hand. Share one of your, what you feel like is your core philosophy. Yes. Time is short. Time is short, right? So that you feel like that gives you some urgency. You want to accomplish more and you set your priorities to enjoy the moment, mm -hmm. whatever that might be, because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Fair enough. Fair, fair enough. When we, we have a rule in our house. We hug when we come in the house, and we hug when we leave the house. Mm -hmm. and that's just like a rule. And that's strangers, too. Well, sure. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Hugging yeah. strangers is okay. Yeah. FedEx. <laughs> postman. I think it was Postman well, now, the other day. UPS and FedEx are both set up, so mm -hmm. now it's called FedEx. FedEx. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a core philosophy? Love is at the heart of every interaction. Nice. All right. I love it. Very good. Love is at the heart of every, I love that love is in the heart. No, it really says, says it twice. That's good. In the heart of what? Every core action. New associate, yes. To live life in the ways of the Lord. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, mine's about being involved in the community. So I think you kind of touched on that, but I didn't see that as. No. So, so that's what you say. What would, would you frame it? How would I frame that? Yeah. Say that. Um, community involvement. I don't have Help me out. Well, one of your yes. core philosophies. I am a contribution yeah. to the community. Oh. Contributing to the community yeah. is a core philosophy for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Jeff, what about you? I'm hovering around something with family. Uh huh. Family matters. Family sure. Matters All right. Does it Hands the job to your kids or something. Right. Uh, leaving a legacy. Leaving a legacy. Yeah. Mine right. is similar to that. Um, I take every opportunity that I can to connect with my kids. It's, they're busy and I'm busy. And so even if it's a little text or a phone call or just driving an hour to spend an hour with them right. and then drive back home. Yeah, it's a, Right. It's, For sure. A hundred percent. I feel you. It was flying four hours and driving, flying three hours and driving an hour to spend. I mean, I did not spend that much time with my youngest, but She's good. And we connect a lot. You know, that's the thing too. It's like, even when you see him, it's like, you hope it doesn't feel like it's been a long time. Oh, we talked to a couple of days ago, you know, so it's, it's been hard for her, you know, going from starter and main person in the team and then, we're, you know, all state team to like not playing to your mm -hmm. freshman again. has been a 
challenge. So one of the things too, I, I, I plan for transgenerational wealth. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. So that's both a uh, philosophy and an action. Yeah. Like it, like that is a vision. Right. It's even bigger. Like you need that something you need to create and continue. Like plan it's right. important to to make it easier for the, my grands and great grands to to have something to start from right. right from scratch. Well, you know, and I think it's absolute because I I feel the same way. I want to leave something for my kids. What my dad gave me was a work ethic. What my mom gave me was empathy. You know, and those are things way more valuable than money. Sure. But how do they have all that money? It'll probably be a <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> him too. <laughs> I think I, you know it's important we still give those things like work ethic and. Uh, being a good person uh, to the kids, and again, raising good adults, giving them the right philosophies, that if it is ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 or that much a year or whatever, that they use it in a ways that contribute <laughs> and help them grow bigger and do more versus like, oh, I can almost live on that and try to do as little as possible within those means. I would say time is short, spend it with those you love. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Great. A lot of what everybody says, and I think it's the teacher in me too, is awareness leads to choice. Okay. True. I like yeah. that. Right. And that, so, I mean, just, and, and I guess that goes along with all constantly growing. You continue to grow, you create an awareness on different things. Mm -hmm. and well, it's right. A choice to go, you know, continue to go with right. that or not. Right. So, well, I, hit, I tried to hit on that earlier to where it's like, I aware I have the power. Now, how do I use the power? So it's the awareness and then the choice. The awareness, you have a choice and then actually making that choice. Right, what about our uh, on Zoom folks here? You can wear volume. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Danny. Listen to understand and not to respond. Good, very good. That's a great philosophy, helping communication for sure. And what about uh, Willie? Willie. Mine is believing in, in yourself, sharing with others and family, trusting God is my trail to success. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole motto. How about Judy? <laughs> well, I had a couple ideas. Make my life the best I can with the time and resources I have and make more sustainable resources while helping others and myself. There you go. So you might distill that down to like a philosophy, like a line or a couple words, because that's the kind of the paragraph behind it. But you're right on track, you know, and expand our resources. And what a great, great philosophy, you know, because uh, again, the more you have, the more you can help. So good stuff. So as a reminder, we start to wrap up here. Mm -hmm. Success is a progressive realization of a worthwhile goal or endeavor. Um, Hold on. So I've got the book here. Okay. So I will have the book for sale and I will have the book for folks online. I got the information here. You send me the money. I'll send you the books. Okay. Sweet. It's like a $3 charge for shipping, no matter how many you get. So I'll eat the rest of it. Okay. So this is the fun part of the presentation where you're going to put your pens down. Everybody actually stands up. You can stand up at home as well. Oh, you are standing. Danny. <laughs> I call it in, in uh, Zoom. That's the that's the bell. <laughs> All, right. Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, we say we loosen up and open our arms up. Money flows to me. Money, money flows, flows to me. Money, money, me. Flows to me. money flows to me. I'm a money magnet. I'm, I'm a money magnet. magnet. I'm a great recruiter. I'm a great recruiter. I'm a great recruiter. I'm a great recruiter. I am a leader. I am a leader. I inspire people. I inspire people. I attract quality people. I attract quality people. I help people reach success. 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 Both hands. I will reach my goals. 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 Oh, oh, reach my goal. Right. Give yourselves a hand. Great job, everybody. Great job. Woo